Welcome! My name is Humaira Esby and this is Inside the Frame, where we deep dive into the creative minds that make our world extraordinary. And speaking of extraordinary, tonight we are sitting down with Rukaiya Tufa, an inspiring force in Ariwa's entrepreneurial scene. So let's go inside the frame to uncover the magic behind her incredible journey and the story that fuels her success. As she has introduced, my name is Rukaiya Tofa Bashir. I'm from Kano State, and it is uh, the backdrop of where my business started. A lot of inspiration comes from Kano State um, in terms of our vast resources, in terms of plant resources. Um, we have really a, a very good array of plants mm -hmm. that are very, very good and resilient in terms of repair and rejuvenation for the skin and for the hair. So my beauty, my business is called Raw Beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a women-led, uh, sustainability-driven uh, beauty business that I started from my kitchenette in Kano in 2019. Mm -hmm. Um, and the need for the business was really stemmed from uh, me trying to solve my own personal skin, skin issues mm -hmm. and also my daughter's. Mm -hmm. um, so I've suffered from eczema. I've told mm -hmm. this story many times, but uh, dealing with eczema from a very young age mm -hmm. and it being something that really affected me, I, I would say, especially as a teenager um, and how it really... I would say, disabled me from doing a lot of the things that I wanted mm -hmm. to do because it really affected my confidence as mm -hmm. a teenager. Um, so that coupled with me giving birth to my daughter and uh, sensing that she probably also has I this bet. problem mm -hmm. really um, made me uh, very take this very, very seriously in trying to find her a solution and also, of course, myself. So uh, being in Kano also put me, because I, I actually registered the business in 2013. Wow, that was long ago. Yeah, that was when I was doing my courses and I was pregnant with my daughter. Mm -hmm. But in, at that time, I wanted to find solutions for myself. Mm -hmm. But I didn't take it anyway. I just registered it. It was even a different name. name. I never okay. started anything. And then when I gave birth to my daughter and I realized she also has a skin condition, I had done the courses. So I started taking it seriously in that um, I was probably just uh, researching mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. just researching and sampling different ingredients, most especially shea butter, mm -hmm. coconut oil. They were the two main ingredients that were very um, known at that time, uh, castor oil. Mm -hmm. uh, but being in Kano in 2019 mm -hmm. is when I started taking it seriously because she was in daycare. I had mm -hmm. twins also. Uh, she had started nursery school. My, my twins were in daycare. Mm -hmm. And so I had a window from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yeah. So I started just experimenting in my kitchenette, just selling to friends and family mm -hmm. and uh, developing the products that way. Mm -hmm. And then I did some business courses and scaled up into a factory, which we're still using as our soap-making mm -hmm. factory now in Kano State. Mm -hmm. But moving mm -hmm. back to Abuja in... Sorry, I keep saying 2019, but I mean 2017 is when I started. Okay. So I moved back to Abuja in 2019, and that's when I set it up properly. Um, now, years later, we have a farm in Kano State that we're about to start planting. Um, it's rainy visit. season now, inshallah, <laughs> so I'm heading to Kano. Um, then we have uh, the, our R&D lab, which mm -hmm. is actually just around the corner okay. from here. Um, in that lab is where we do most of our research and development, all mm. our sampling before, okay. before they go into production. And we have our marketing, we have our manager there. Mm. So we have some staff there. And it's a full-blown business. Yes, and then <laughs> this is now the spa, which is part of the structure. Mm. So the whole structure is really, the idea is setting up a business that is sustainable, mm. that is an African beauty business, because what I realized is that when I started this business and I was finding out and researching into plants mm -hmm. and how to extract oil from seeds and how to do that process myself as opposed to buying it, um, because we had a lot of issues with 
price fluctuations with quality as well of the ingredients. So I wanted something that will enable me to have stable prices mm -hmm. and also a stable quality control system um, that I can embed within my production. Mm -hmm. So this is why I decided to have my own farm so that some of the plants, we can't plant every Everything single ingredient true, we use, true. but some of the plants we use, we can be able to now certify them organic, which mm -hmm. really um, means that we're, we're using you know, ingredients at that level. Mm -hmm. And that will also enable us to be able to compete internationally, which is one of our goals. Yes, I wanted to ask why, why Raw Beauty Africa, but I guess that touches on it. Yes, Raw Beauty Africa, because we're very Afrocentric mm -hmm. in terms of the ingredients, the base ingredients. So you don't source just within Nigeria, but across yes, Africa as yes, well. Yes, yes. We, we, we hope that we will expand. Mm -hmm. We started from northern Nigeria, but there are plants that cut across mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes if you know, we don't find, for example, desert date oil, mm -hmm. sometimes we have to go into Niger. To yeah. get it, you know. Yeah. So there, there, there are oils like that. We also started using when we started. We were using we're we're buying frankincense and myrrh mm -hmm. for our renewal soap from Ethiopia. Okay. You know, so we do use African yeah. plants, and African plants, of course, you, you can find them in Nigeria. You can find them in Ghana. You can mm -hmm. find them across. But they um, all differ. Yes, we say use, African uh, soap here in Nigeria is different from African soap in Morocco. In Morocco, yes. yes. But uh, what we just want to concentrate on is the African ingredients, mm -hmm. you know, because the important thing is to really shed light on it. There's a lot of global beauty brands that actually use African ingredients True. and that market that they're using African ingredients. But um, a, a, a big worry for me is why are African brands not able to compete on the yeah, global stage? True. But yet, you know, they use our ingredients. So that gap definitely needs, needs to be, to be bridged, bridged. And true. that's what Raw Beauty is trying to do, mm. um, to get African brands to be viewed as brands that have value and quality mm -hmm. and can have that trust from consumers. Yeah. Well, you've actually touched on most of the things, my first few questions anyway, but um, I also want to know what product you first produced, and is there a product that you have had to discontinue? Had to discontinue? Mm -hmm. So, the first product... By the way, we have an array yes. of products here from the first product to here. We started, the first product I formulated was the share, share butter. Um, yeah, the skin butter. This is the skin butter, mm -hmm. and now it contains mango butter as well. Okay. Um, so, shea and cocoa was the, the, the were the base ingredients. It mm -hmm. had coconut oil, it had castor oil, mm -hmm. it had moringa oil, it had desert date oil, okay. a little bit of neem oil and moringa oil. Okay. And um, so it's an array of oils Different that are found mm -hmm. locally where the business started. Mm -hmm. And formulation is you do it in such a way that you have a problem. And so it's research into mm -hmm. all the components of the ingredients. Um, you, you use ingredients for the anti-inflammation because mm -hmm. I was trying to solve eczema. Yes, yes. So it had to be something that dealt with an, um, inflammation. It has to be something that is soothing. Mm -hmm. It has to be something that is long lasting in terms of moisturization. Mm -hmm but at the same time doesn't make your skin feel dry. You know, if you mm. put too much oil, it's not hydrating. It's not. So it also had to be very, very hydrating. Also, because of the locality, Kano is a very hot, mm. dry environment. So I needed the product to do all these things. Um, and I needed to be able to package it and send it out, ship it mm. anywhere without, without it melting altering. like a whipped mm. share butter mm. would do and all that. So it's, Still, Alhamdulillah, it's still something that I would say all our products are all still in development. Mm. Product, a product cannot stay static, yes. you know, because yes. there are always new technologies, mm -hmm. new ingredients that True. come into play. True. And so you're constantly having to revise. And mm. But yeah, this is the first product. It started off as a big 16-ounce jar, jar, like a clear mm. jar. And it started out as three products, just the same product, but mm. three different smells. 
But as we went along, we understood that one particular scent was selling out more than the others. Okay. So we just stopped Focus that scent. That. And then, of course, as ingredients started becoming more expensive mm. and, you know, we get our packaging from China, our glasses yeah, I remember come you from the States. That, yeah. You know, so all these things accumulate. So it has gone smaller <laughs> it has, and, but you know just but, as equally as yes, um, but it, it 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 does go a long way impressive and um, yeah so this this was the first product and even the packaging is sustainable and beautiful as well yeah so my background is architecture and okay um, i did i after my architectural um education i went on to do a master's in sustainability and architecture Ooh. so that's so, where i got a lot of you know, I think deep inside. Uh, yeah. Uh, even with my designs, I I have like a very sensible mm. kind of approach. I try to do things that are not going to harm the environment mm. and yeah, sustainable uh, make you possible. like become very wasteful. Mm-hmm. So true. so we we looked into having glass so that you can reuse the jars yeah, for true. something else. Or we have started this thing where you can actually return the return jars. Return them. Yeah, and, and all we do is and just disinfect mm. um disinfect and them and it. clean them mm. and just change the lids so what was what would you say this transition was like from skin to now hair yeah so you know with all the things like you start with body with any business is um consumers demand for products mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I started, I was mostly interested in body because mm. that was my problem. Yeah, that was, that was daughter, a problem. That was my daughter's problem. problem. But then as you go along, people were coming mm. with me. People had acne. And then I had to go and research into acne, what ingredients I could use, what ingredients would be good locally that mm. we can find. And hair, yeah, of course, mm. people started coming. And of course, I have young daughters and yeah. I'm very particular about what I use for them. Mm. So um, the hair products also started with me just using them at home. And then mm. later on, um, we, we made them public. Okay, well, tell us a little more about the beauty bar because this is such a beautiful place. So yeah, the beauty bar, you know, is something that as you go mm. along, your always revenue is very important to mm. business. And one of the difficulties we're having with the skincare brand is that we didn't have a retail space. So it started off as that idea because um, our first structure was, uh, first um, strategy was to work with retail Retail. partners Mm -hmm. and just have them in pharmacies, clinics, shops, you know. But we faced some difficulty with retail partners. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always issues. Um, And so we just decided to go ahead and have like a physical space but I didn't want to just have like mm. a space where you just come and buy. I wanted True. to attach services That's clever. Um, with the mm. product. So if you come to do, like if you come for your wash day for your hair, mm-hmm. you actually use our shampoo to wash your hair. We use so you condition. use mostly most of the, ing- yes. the products you have yes. here. When too. you come for our raw beauty facial, you use the face products. Okay. For our hammam, we use the, the body products. Mm. You know, for even for the massages, mm. we use our oils and balm. For the pedicure, we use our essential balm, um, and we have a foot scrub that we made especially for the for, for the pedicure. Mm. Yes. So, can you tell us a little more about the the treatments you have here? So the treatments range from hair to, to body. face to body. Mm. Um, we have hair styling, and we treat both uh, natural, natural and, and relaxed mm. hair. Um, and Caucasian hair. Um, we also, also have, colored. yeah, we also have pedicure, manicure. We have um, treatment rooms mm-hmm. that can do facials, massages. We have halawa, which is the sugar scrub, and then we have our aesthetics room, which has machinery. So more kind of advanced treatments. This is um, treatment I look forward like to having. Facial. Yes, <laughs> we have micro needling. We have PRF, which is like the next uh, next step of technology okay. um, from PR, PRP. PRP. Okay. So we have PRF, which is like the next uh, the next step. step. Up. We have analysis machines, so you can come in for consultation. Mm-hmm. You can analyze your skin, your body. Do you, you do analyze hair analysis hair. as well? Yes, and then they will. We have a doctor and nurse that mm-hmm. we work with that are here so they will give you like a suggested course of treatment on how to treat whatever mm-hmm. using what we have we also have a steam room 
So we have a ham map. Those are our services for now. Mm, for now. We're going to start doing laser soon. We have other body uh, machines coming mm. through, inshallah. So talking about sustainability and clean beauty, uh, how clean would you say raw beauty is? Because for most people, when they hear the word clean or raw, they assume like local products, local production, you get samples or um, uh, what are materials. And like you said, you mentioned you started in your kitchen and everyone would assume like when you say raw or clean, they would just automatically, their it's mind like goes like the base to, product, yes. the base ingredient. Yes, but I feel there is so much that goes into your product especially. Yes. Um, there's so, so much science that goes into it, yeah. so much technology that goes into it. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, I mean, clean beauty really is just a marketing Terminology. Terminology. <laughs> you know, just like sustainability mm -hmm. is. Our products, we just say that they are advanced mm -hmm. in that we don't only use the local raw ingredients. We also use, you know, there, there are different stages of natural. What mm -hmm. we say is we are advanced and we are plant-based. Mm -hmm. So most of our products, we have some products that do have a bit of beeswax in it. We mm -hmm. use organic beeswax in some of our products, like the hair hair styling balm, which is made with all these oils that I've been talking mm. about, but we set it in a little bit of beeswax so that it's okay. not a, an oil, mm. but it's something you can, you can scoop up mm. and it's a bit more solid. Yes. Um, so those kinds, of, uh, those kinds of products, we do use a bit of beeswax, mm. but mostly I would say 98% is plant-based. Mm. You and there's some that are 100% black plant based. Most of them are 100%. There is a product you mentioned having uh, retinol. Is yeah, so like we're advanced, like I said, not only do we use the raw ingredients, but we use also active ingredients. Yes. So like vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, retinol, which is vitamin A. Mm. We have balsam copaiba here, which is like an anti-inflammatory active ingredient. Mm -hmm. um, it's from South America, actually. Um, so we use a lot of, um, this one has Gromwell extract, which tomato licopene, these are brightening mm. um, ingredients, but they're all stemming from natural, natural ingredients. ingredients. But of course, they've gone through a process, mm -hmm. you know. So we do use active ingredients, but they're all stemming from plants. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're probably like, yes, processed in the lab, mm -hmm. but yes, they've gone through a process from their natural first stage mm -hmm. to another stage, but they're still derived from natural uh, plant-based mm -hmm. ingredients. So, you know, there are different levels to natural. We can still call them plant-based. Mm -hmm. And even natural ingredients can be chemicals. Yes. You know? Yes. Like so, the retinol, so you can, they, they can be derived from yes. plants. and Yes. And clean beauty is really just um, a regulation mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, if... The interference between... Yes. You have to look at uh, ingredients that correlate mm -hmm. and that go and stick with one another. So to reduce uh, reacting... To them, but also uh, you look at ingredients that probably have been processed in a very sustainable way. Yes. Um, another aspect of clean beauty is, you know, the proportionality mm. of the ingredients. Like that, if if you're following EU regulations, there are perhaps some active ingredients that they give you percentages of what you cannot go above. Beyond, mm -hmm. you know, because of reaction mm -hmm. to these ingredients. So you, you, you try to at least make it very user-friendly and people can use within their own personal homes. Mm -hmm. So they're not too clinical and you don't get a lot of people misusing them. Sure. You know? So that, those are all aspects of clean beauty. Um, and uh, how do you ensure the brand remains authentic and true to itself and the value that is uh, staying clean and um, sustainable. Yes, it's, it's a difficult thing. And how do you grow from that? It's a difficult thing, but I, I feel like part of our mission to support what we want to do is to educate. Mm -hmm. It's really all about education, education, right. education, mm -hmm. because especially in a terrain such as Nigeria, you know, you find that a lot of people are into bleaching products. Yes. A lot of and the regulation are, is not yes, much. A lot of people who come to you might say, oh, it's not giving me the Where? kind of effect that I want. And that's okay. You know, you have to ensure that you know who you are mm -hmm. and you just stay to your values and you proudly 
tell people who mm. you are and who you are not. Yeah. Uh, so that as you go along, those that are for you know to stick with you. And some people that are not even for you that might yeah. have started off wanting something else and gotten eventually. their skin damaged will eventually come back to you and True. say, I need my skin to be repaired. I want to stop bleaching, you know, and all these things, which we, we welcome and we're not, uh, we're not pointing fingers at mm. everybody because I feel like the whole bleaching thing is really about education. A lot of people are not educated True. about it. A lot of uh, people access skincare in terms of, oh, what are you using? Mm. They don't actually go and consult. True. They don't find out what their skin type is. It's more of, I've seen Humaira use this thing. Okay, mm. let me also give it a when in reality, I've seen it work for her. It but doesn't work that way. I have normal skin. You have oily mm -hmm. skin. It can never correlate. That's it can true. never be. Our skin, skin is needs different. are different. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's just really about education. And a lot of people are bleaching mainly because, you know, like I said, I started with body products, right? But the amount of demand I was getting for people coming to me with acne problems, I realized because I never had mm -hmm. acne problems. So I didn't know what, you know, all I was thinking was body eczema and mm. all that. Um, so I didn't know like the amount, I would say the proportion of people with ac suffering from acne mm. in Africa is really huge. It's huge. So it was important for us to also try to give solutions for that mm. to our customers. And, you know, a lot of people, I would say, fall into the trap of bleaching because what acne does is it leaves scars, mm. it leaves dark spots. And like I said, for us, it's really about educating them mm -hmm. that first you have to solve, you have to treat the acne. Issue you have first. to ensure that the acne is treated. Mm -hmm. And then you now go on and start treating the hyperpigmentation. So don't never just be more mindful of the hyperpigmentation mm -hmm. because you're just going to end up going round in circles. Rather the and root of the problem. Exactly. Start at the root mm -hmm. cause and then treat that and then treat the effects of the mm -hmm. root cause. So you mentioned uh, um, the need to control your pricing. I know um, running a business in Nigeria is not for the faint of hearts. <laughs> so can you tell us the specific challenge you have come across with development, um, yes. growing your business, so and things like that? It's a challenge. Um, we just celebrated International Women's Day not too long ago. Oh, yeah. And Raw Beauty's campaign was um, inspiring inclusion, but inspiring more of financial inclusion. inclusion. Because as a woman in Nigeria, as a woman entrepreneur, I would say the opportunities for me, as opposed to my male counterpart, the might same not time. be the same. Mm -hmm. There's a huge gap. And I have approached banks, just speaking to them, I've been weighing whether to whether to get a loan mm. uh, to get there faster. Mm. But at the same time, you know, it's something that women need to be speaking about because I feel like there's definitely a lot of bias mm. when it comes to how women access funds. Women access funds, but I, I feel like Nigeria keeps us at that micro level. Mm. You know, I, I don't need to go to the bank I and agree. borrow 2 million or even 10 million naira. If I want to go to the bank to borrow money, I'll probably borrow like a billion naira. True, <laughs> you know true. Mean? And they might look at me like, you're a woman. Like, mm. how would you know how to, or do you even have, a lot of it has collateral. Do you mm. even have collateral mm. for that amount? Do you get what I mean? So there true. are different challenges that women will face. But I think it's about speaking about those challenges and for women to really come together and see how they can support one another because we cannot keep operating at this micro level. That's true. You know, we have, we have a lot of ideas. There's so many women who are doing businesses. A lot of women have businesses, but they're not able to grow up past a certain level, you know. And, and for me, you know, I'm quite ambitious, I would say. We, we currently even have like an export strategy that we started working on. So the brand itself, it's going to become some, something else mm -hmm. and um, it's going to hopefully go into the UK and the US. That's wonderful. That's great news. So as a female founder in this industry, what, what advice would you give others? 
other women? <laughs> well, I always tell women to appreciate themselves first and foremost. Because True. It's really not easy. Mm. And then, you know, just give themselves some grace. Because um, you do a lot for women. You do. You really do. What you're doing with bringing women together, your event, it's, it's really empowering. It's, I always go in and live with something. That's great. Always, Thank you. always. So that whole thing started really because I just felt stuck. Uh, here I was as a woman entrepreneur working, but I just felt like I was alone. I just felt like women were not talking. But I know a lot I of women em entrepreneurs, but it's like we just don't talk about yes, and that's, what we do, that's, especially Arewa women. Es especially that. And um, I have always been, you know, my background, I've worked with Princess Foundation where I was uh, working with Indbao mm -hmm. to do, when I came back to Nigeria, to do conferences, mm -hmm. international conferences and sustainable architecture yes. and all these things. So I was used to going to those kind of events and I would always find myself, especially for international women, mm. I would always find myself in an event and I'm probably one of two yeah. Arewa women. The inclusion and I'm like, is... But where are all the rest, you know? And are they so just many. not doing anything? But when I meet them on a personal level, then I'll find out about what they're doing and Incredible. I'm blown away. I'm like, why aren't we telling our stories? Why aren't we discussing this with it each other? It is truly why I, I wanted to start this series, just yeah. so I can enlighten and amplify the exactly, volume of... because yeah. I think also our culture doesn't allow us to see more as a bragging mm. thing. Um, I had this this Celebrating Women where we called it Aisha and it was inspired by Aisha. Yes, I was there. Uh, there's this hadith about her when she was facing a lot of um, obstacles and people were so against her and, you know, but she was always, because she was a teacher, mm -hmm. she was always saying, telling people about herself mm. and telling people about her strengths mm. and the things that she's doing. And she would always say, you know, not to brag, mm. but this is what I've done. This is what is <laughs> happening. Fix yourself. Yeah, okay. You understand? Mm. Like, not to brag, but this is what I mm. did. And she's always patting herself on the shoulders, on the back. Um, so I felt if she can do that, and she's telling these stories, as she said, not to brag, mm. but to inspire other to people, inspire. To, to get women to feel like, oh, if she can do it, mm. I can also do it. And to have that support, you know, to give women that support, like, come on, you can do it. If you I can, can do it, come can on, you do can it do it. Too. So I felt like in that in this community, we really needed to come together mm. and support one another. And if we're just meeting in a wedding, mm. where it's all the about... The conversation is totally about, different. Ah, what am I going to wear? So much pressure for me. <laughs> And when you meet, you know, is, what are you, you wearing? And when you meet, the conversation is so superficial. Yeah, true. Um, how are we supposed to know each other and support one mm. another and discuss issues that actually affect us and bring about change? So it was important to create a positive and safe space where women can come and discuss different issues that are plaguing them, but also be able to most importantly tell their stories. Because it's by telling your story that I'll be like, ah, Humaira. I didn't know that this is what you were into. Oh my God. You know, and it's only by you telling me your story that when I'm somewhere yes. and something comes up, an opportunity that I can now call Humaira and say, hey, you need to get Very here, important. you know? So we really need to... Uh, we need to be very serious about creating such communities. You know, in our culture, in Hausa culture, we grew up with our dad, with our granddad. They had wooden healers to the dead day. They would always, no matter what they're doing, they want to go there even for yes. an hour Yes. to meet up. It, it was just about networking. It is, it is. And everybody knew, oh, this is where we're in Chensuke mm. Hira. You know, you know where to find them. You know where you to know find them. If you working. have a proposal or whatever. So sure. women need to start. I'm not saying every night we should do yes, it. Yes, but once but in a while. we definitely need to start coming important. together um, in these type of environments where it's okay to discuss yourself. It's okay to discuss ideas you mm. have. Because somebody might be able to say, hey, you know, why don't I mm. connect you with so-so person? Or oh, why They're don't I join They're also doing a similar thing. Mm. Or what? No, anything can come out of it's it. It's true. It's true. So what's the biggest misconception you've heard about an Ariwo woman? 
Oh, there are so many misconceptions. But I feel like I've been doing this celebrating women and it's just made me into a woman that is just so for women. Like, there's nobody that can come and tell me a woman is doing this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, I just come straight to her rescue. Yes. I just feel like this has made me so, like, such a woman supporter mm. that everybody knows. Like, you can't come to me and complain to me about another mm. woman. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to shut you mm. down. You know, so I, I think those are important because I've seen men instinctively and it's like innately in them. Mm. A man doesn't go and bash another man just like that. Like a man will support another man. Do you get what I mean? Yes, they just yes, have yes. that innately in them. Mm -hmm. And we need to get to that level of support because... It's been natural coming to us. Yes, because there's no way we can rescue ourselves from all the institutional barriers if we don't come together. It's true. There's no way, there's no way you want to do a business for so-so amount. Mm -hmm. All you need to go is, if you have a sound business plan, mm -hmm. all you need to go is go to the bank. And if you have something to back it up and you have a way, a mm -hmm. proposal to be able to pay the bank, the bank should be able to give you that money. True. Why isn't that being done? Why am I being told, oh, you have to know so-so politician. Yes, yes. You know? But there are no women politicians that I can go to. If I go to a man, he might be like, ah, Omni, small you like this. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want this kind of money? Do you get what true. I mean? It's true. So it's like that. It's true. So now, knowing what you know about the industry and how business works in Nigeria, what would you change or what would you have done better? I would have started this woman thing sooner. I think I would yeah. have gone a lot further. <laughs> you know, because honestly, what I've noticed now, what I've come to realize being in business for six years is that business is about relationships. Mm -hmm. It's really about building relationships, even with your staff, because people are going to move on, but mm -hmm. you need to keep those relationships. It's about relationships, it's about building community. Whatever business you're doing, mm -hmm. if you don't have a community behind you, it's, it's not going to go as far as you want it to be. So, what is next for you? The next thing for us, for Raw Beauty, is really uh, our export strategy. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for this conversation. It was lovely. Thank um, you, for, for being our first guest oh, okay. on this show. Yeah, I'm very excited. I can't wait to look back on everything which we've talked about and I can't wait for other people to see it as well. Keep inspiring us, keep Thank motivating and empowering us. And you're Thank doing you. amazing, you really are. The salon, the beauty bar is incredible. You have amazing kitchen also. <laughs> and the staff are doing amazing also. Thank you. So, yeah, again, thank you very much for having us. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you.